what the hell are custom objects and why should you care? I know you have that question too. In this video, you're going to learn what are custom objects, why should you care, and why are they better than custom fields? Because that's the burning question of the day. Now, before I show you the configuration for creating custom objects and associations, I want to show you this diagram that I've put some effort in to explain what exactly are custom objects. And we're also going to talk about standard objects because it's really key to understand in order to fully encompass the concept of this custom object. So let's talk about standard objects first. Now, Contexts and opportunities are standard objects that have been there in Go High Level for as long as possible, and they have some default custom fields attached to it, like first name, last name, phone, email. And when we talk about opportunities, we have opportunity name, pipeline, status, and source. Now, of course, these are custom or system fields, but they're tied into an object, which is opportunities in this case, and then we have contexts in this case, right? So objects basically give you the ability to work with complex data structures or relationships because there can be many contexts and each contact will have different custom fields. So in order to group them better in a relation database, it is important to create an object. And when we talk about the relationship between standard objects, we know in Go High Level that one contact can have many opportunities. So this is a one-to-many association where let's say there's one lead named Mark in a car dealership and it can have an opportunity in a sales pipeline and then that person can also be another pipeline, let's say customers. So one contact can be tied to multiple opportunities, but each opportunity can only be linked to one contact. So that is why it is a one-to-many association and this already exists in Go High Level. Now you might argue, why don't we use custom fields? Why do we need objects? Because even though we create objects, you still have to create custom fields under that object. So why don't we do that in the first place? And here's a perfect example why. Mark is a contact in our sub account and he has two different opportunities sitting in two different pipelines. Now because opportunities are objects, we can pertain unique data in both of those opportunities. And if you were to use custom fields, you can only pertain one kind of data at one time. And if you need to add in another one, it will basically overwrite it. So that is why having objects is really beneficial because it opens up an opportunity to have an extended database and create more associations at one given time. Now these were standard objects which are system generated by Go High Level and they're in every account. That is how the association is. Now, let's say we have Go High Level and now we want to convert it into a CRM for a car dealership, maybe for a restaurant, maybe for a real estate business. Now, in order to really modify it and take it to the next level, we need to create custom objects like property or a car or different things like that because that will eventually give us the ability to customize the CRM based on our needs. So this is where custom objects come in. Now we had contacts and opportunities as standard ones, but now let's say we can create any kind of object like cars, property, a restaurant, right? And that will give us an option to create extended custom fields. So a car can be an object just like an opportunity and it can have multiple custom fields attached to it. And then we can create more associations with our contacts. And I'll talk about how that helps us. So when we talk about custom objects relationship, it can be one to many or many to many. That is the ability that it gives us. So if you have cars and object and we have two cars in our account right now, like Tesla Model S or Toyota Camry. Now, of course, these would have a model make, manufacturing year, engine, horsepower. So all those attributes are there. Now we have a contact named Mark again. And now Mark is an owner of a Toyota Camry, right? But then they also have a co-owner. Let's say his wife, Lisa. So she's the co-owner. Now we can link two contacts to this Toyota Camry at one given time, establishing a many to one relationship, which is possible using custom objects. So if you think of it this way, let's say you have multiple cars at the same time, each car might be associated with multiple contacts, like I said, and in a true manager many association, one contact could be associated with multiple cars because Mark could have multiple cars. So let's say he has Tesla Model S and Toyota Camry at the same time. So he can be linked as an owner, which is the association with these two objects. And then if he shares a car with her wife, Lisa, he can still be added as an owner for Toyota Camry and Lisa can be co-owner for that. So that is how we can create complex relationships using custom objects and go high level. And then if you need to talk about the custom objects versus custom fields comparison, because this question is being asked a lot, there's a lot of differences between these. So the main one is the structure because custom objects can handle complex structures and relationships and custom fields cannot. And one of the things that I really like about custom objects versus custom fields is that it can pertain data over time because custom fields can only save one data at a time. But for objects, if we have multiple listed in there, you can attach the same contact to multiple objects at one given time. And that way you can put it in a history. For for example, if you create an object called purchase history for a car dealership and it has custom fields like vehicle purchase, purchase date, 
purchase price salesperson right now if there's a person named mark who comes in he purchases a car a toyota camry he will be linked to that model here right but then let's say a year later he buys another car that is listed under our car objects and if he buys that he will be listed as an owner of that as well now if i go into mark's contact i would be able to see both the cars that he has bought in a one year span and that is exactly what custom objects can unlock and custom fields cannot now that we have talked in detail about the custom and standard objects, the differences between custom objects and custom fields, let's dive into our GoHello with sub account and I'll show you a step-by-step -step process on how to create these custom objects and how to create associations and how to make the best use of it. All right, so once you're in your GoHello with sub account, the first thing you have to do is head over to settings here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see objects listed as a new feature. So just click on that. And here you will see a standard object, of course, which is context, which we talked about. And then we have an option to add a custom object. Now, as per my knowledge, I think this is only accessible to the 497 plan. So if you are the 97 or the 297 plan, you will not have access to this feature yet. So let's click on add custom object here. And then here we have to add in a name. So I'm going to call it car and I'm going to give you an example of a car dealership here so we understand this better. So we have to add the singular name and then we have to add in the plural as well. So we'll do cars. And if you click on that, this is the internal name. Now, this cannot be changed and this is for the API use purpose. So if you are using objects using APIs, this is the name that it will refer to. So just make sure that you really thought this through because this cannot be changed once done. And then what would be the primary display field name? Now, think of it like this. So if a contact is a standard object, think about which field is the most unique, which is usually a font number, right? So that would be the primary field. So in this case, what could be a unique feature about a car that is different from everything? Because if you just do the car type, which could be a sedan and crossover, there's multiple cars who will overlap in that. So try to use a field that is unique to your object. So in this case, we can do a VIN number like it says here, which would always be unique for each car. And then we can also change the icon here to let's say we want to do a car because that best resonates with it. So let's do this. And then you can also type in an object description. They've also given an example here if you need to do that. And once we're happy with the settings, we can click on create custom object. All right, once it is done, it will give us a pop-up to add custom fields. So let's go ahead and add some custom fields here. And using our example that we had here, we can add these custom fields under our object, which is car vehicles. So we can do make model or year or mileage. So let's go back here. I'm gonna create the first one as a single line here. I'll call this one make. And then this would be listed under the car object, content and opportunity, of course, for standard objects, which we talked about. So this is the new one that we see an option here. And then we're going to group it under car info. This gets created automatically once you do it. So once we're happy with these settings, let's go ahead and click on save. And then I'll create another one as a number and let's call it mileage. And again, car, car info here, and let's group it under that. And then let's do another one, select single line, and then color and again this will be under the car and car info and now we'll click on save now of course you can create more you can create more objects and then group more fields under it for now i'm just going to create three so let's head back here in our dashboard and you will see a very interesting thing here so now you can see cars are listed in your custom menu which is an object so if you were using go high level for a car dealership you can create objects just like this so vehicles purchase history leases and then they will show up here and then you can basically use them for your database which is really cool so this is how it extends the functionality to each niche and it can really serve that well so you can see here we do not have any cars listed here so let's fix that i'm going to click on add car here and then you can type in a win number i'm just going to pretend that's the win number here so we click on save and then it will pop up with this so we have a few things here so there's an owner so this would ideally be the person who'll be in charge of the car operations and management or maybe sales inside the dealership so let's select this one and then you can add more followers like your staff members maybe your senior management so they can see what's going on with this vehicle or car so if we have the win number already dialed in we can type in a make so let's do a toyota here we can put in a mileage if it's a used car as twenty thousand kilometers and then we can do a color red. I think we should also add the model here because that way it will make more sense. So let's just save this here for now. And I'm going to add the model custom field under this object as well because I think that is necessary to explain this example better. So let's head back. You can always add custom fields on the go. So we'll click on add fields here again, single line. Now I'm going to call this model and the object will be the car and car info. So we hit save here. And now if we go back to cars again, we should have that custom field. Of course, you will not see it right away, but in order to fix that, just click on manage fields here. And then here, 
you can basically show all of these details. So that's really cool. So let's do that. And now you will see whatever we added here is now listed. So of course, this one does not have any model here. And we can fix that by clicking here. And then I'm going to do the model as Camry. So that makes sense now. Now once it is saved, you will see it like this here. Now let's add one more car. So I'll just put in another win number here. And then let's add in another car. So I'm just going to do zero kilometers here. And we'll put model Y, let's say. And we're going to hit on save. Now, once it is done, it will show up here. So our step one is now complete where we created an object, we created some custom fields and then added some cars to it. Now, the major step two is to create a relationship or association between the cars object and context. So how do we do that? Now you can click here and then click on this associations icon and you will see that there's no association found because we do not have anything set up. So you can click on object settings here and it will basically take you to the same settings under objects under details. This is what we created. And this is the association, right? So let's go ahead and create an association and I'll explain in detail. So right now, GoHeld gives you an option to only link or associate with contacts. So cars object can only be associated with contacts. It cannot be associated with opportunities as of now. So we'll select that as that's the only option. Then next up, we have name of the association. And here's a very simple way to understand it. So let's say we have a contact called Mark and then we have a car which is Toyota Camry. Now, what could be the link between these two? So Mark could be an owner of this car. So what is the association? It is the ownership or the car ownership because that is connecting these two objects, right? So Mark owns this car. So the association here will be called car owner. And that is exactly what we have to put here. So we'll do car owner. For now, we're going to create a single label, but we'll also do co-owner because Lisa, Mark's wife, would be the co-owner of the same car. So that would be another association. So for now, let's do car owner here only. And then these are some default options that we cannot change as of now. And you can also see under the preview that a car associated to many contacts with label car owner. So that perfectly explains it. So let's go ahead and click on save here for now. And then we'll click on create association here again. And this time we'll call it co-owner. And then I'm going to go ahead and save here as well. So we have two associations as of now. And you can create more because you only have to think about the possible links between a contact object and a car object. So we could have a mechanic as well because a mechanic could be a contact in your sub account, also be a link or an association between the two objects. So I hope it gives you an idea on how you can go about associations. So now that we have step two completed, which was to create associations, let's go to step three and actually make some relationships between the two objects. So I'm going to go back here and under cars, I will pick the Toyota Camry, so I'll click on that. And now if I click on the associations, you will see that we can now associate a contact. So if I click on this, I will be able to search from my list. So I'm going to select Mark because it's really popular in this example. So let's pick him. And now you can see that he is listed as a car owner. That is the relationship we're establishing. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And now this is saved, right? And then I can click on add here again, and then we can list her as the co-owner. I will not purposely do it from here. I'll show you another interface where we can do this from, which is contacts. So let's cancel this because I want to show you how you can do it from contacts too. So I'll go here, I'll search Lisa and I'll open her contact. And now you'll see the associations label here as well. So you can actually click here and then you can associate a new car here, which is pretty cool because you can see cars is listed as an object here. You can associate a new car and you can type in the VIN number. So of course, VIN number is not easily identifiable from this case, but let's say this was for Toyota Camry. And if I select that, I can basically list her as the co-owner. So I can establish that relationship from right here. And once this is done, you will see that here. Now, if you go back to cars and if I open the Toyota Camry and I click on associations, we should see two links here. So one is Mark, who's the car owner, and then we have Lisa as the co-owner. So look how beautifully that works. And you can also do one more thing because it doesn't show up right here and you have to open it. So we can save that step. If you click on manage fields here and you click on associations, you can actually unlock these fields so they show up right here. So now you can actually see who's the car owner, who's the co-owner. And of course, if you add in more associations, you can show them here as well. So this is how you can actually manage the system for a car dealership, extending the use of Go High Level using custom objects. And you can do this for any kind of niche or industry. So this is like Go High Level giving you kryptonite that you can use to supercharge your CRM and then customizing it in really good detail for your niche or your industry. And you can create any kind 
kind of databases or objects and then create relations or associations that best serves your business. All right, so that was all about this video. I hope you found some value in this. And again, if you have any feedback or questions, please comment them below and I would love to get back. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is Sama signing off. I'll see you in the next one.